<laughs> so who are you? That's my first question on everybody. Hi, my name's John Knoll, and I'm a visual effects supervisor here at Industrial Light and Magic. And you're the guy who wrote, or one of the guys who wrote uh, Photoshop. Co-developer of Photoshop, yes. Yeah. And so you said there's a 20th uh, anniversary coming up? Yeah, well, as we, as we speak, it's mid-January 2010. Uh, next month is the 20th anniversary of the release of Photoshop 1.0. Uh, Adobe's putting together a little celebration of that uh, anniversary, and I've been asked to do a demonstration of an uh, early version of Photoshop. Uh, I still have, for reasons that I'm not completely <laughs> clear myself, I still have a fairly old Macintosh uh, that I've been keeping in storage. It's a Power Macintosh 8500. Uh, and I pulled it out because uh, it, it's got OS 9 on it, and it, so it can still run the, the you know very old binaries. When Photoshop came out, it was OS 6.5, wasn't it? Uh, or 6.6 yeah, six six something. Seven, no, 7 may have started shipping. 7 came out in, two, in 1991, right? Okay, because well then, was, then, yeah, it was prior, prior to OS 7. Yeah. Um, That's how I got my name Scobalizer, by the way, because I, I loaded uh, the beta of uh, OS 7 on everybody's machines at San Jose State University, and one of the, one of the people who worked there said, I've been Scobalized, I can't use my computer anymore. <laughs> That's why I remember that year. <laughs> so I, I had done 19. a reasonably good job of kind of keeping a historical archive, and I pulled out one of my old uh, backup disks, and I have versions of Photoshop uh, going all the way back to the original display program. Uh, I booted up display. Display actually will run, sort of. I mean, you can you can boot it up. You can see bring up the uh, the about box. You can see what's in the menus. Uh, unfortunately, I think the API to the memory manager changed because anytime there's an attempt to uh, allocate memory, it just gives a uh, out of memory error. So you can't actually do anything. You can't actually display an image with it, which is too bad. But at least hey, I can still boot it up. Uh, and I have some, some older versions. Um, I think that the demo I'm going to do at uh, Adobe next week uh, is actually going to be uh, 0 0.93. Wow. Which uh, I think is close to the version that I, I originally demoed at, at uh, Adobe to start the negotiations for them publishing it. Yeah. So. How much RAM is on this machine? The, the one that I'm, I'll do the demo on? Yeah. Oh, Which, it's, that's a newer it's, machine. it's not that old, I think it, it dates back from 1995, yeah. so I don't know, it probably has 16 megs or RAM in <laughs> Megs, <laughs> not gigs, megs. Yeah. <laughs> right. And Photoshop ran, in the original Photoshop, how much RAM did that need when it came out in 90? In as much as you could give it. Yeah. I mean, it, it had a virtual memory system for paging the, the images uh, off, off a disk, but um, I remember Steve Wozniak uh, showed me off his new RAM drive back then, 91. He bought a 400 meg RAM drive, cost 40 grand, <laughs> and he he bought it just to run Photoshop. And it and wow. sh he had a he had a forty thousand dollar dye sublimation color printer, you know, the, one of the first mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, and uh, now a seventy dollar printer does a better job. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, but the first hard drive I ever owned, uh, I got from my Macintosh Plus, and it was a uh, uh, Super Mac XP20, 20, 20 yeah. megabyte drive, it was 750 bucks. Sounded like a jet engine about to take off. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you doing here now at ILM? Uh, I'm working on a technical test for uh, an upcoming, maybe, movie. You know, depending on the success of the test, the movie will either get a green light or not. I want to demonstrate that it's possible. Yeah. And beyond that, I, I'm not really at liberty to comment on it. Very cool. Thank how, you. how has your world changed since, you know, Photoshop? What, what has changed about your world? from the Photoshop one days to today? Well, everything's advanced somewhat. Um, the technology always kind of gets in the way, and one thing that we always try and do is to make the, the technology a little more user-friendly so that artists can spend more of their time doing art and less kind of wrestling with screens of text and trying to figure out from the error messages, you know, what broke. So the more you can kind of get the technology out of the way of the artist, so that they can be more directly doing the art, the better. But what ends up happening here all the time is because we're always trying to work on the, the newest cutting edge, the latest thing, uh, 
often that hasn't had a an opportunity to have been sort of productized into a nice user interface. So okay. we're, you know, we always end up kind of on the, the leading edge of the wrestling with um, technology. What, what percentage? You worked on Avatar, right? A yeah. little bit. What percentage of movies do you think from now on are going to be 3D? I don't know. Because we, we were just at, Guy and I were just at the Consumer Electronics Show and they were showing off all the 3D TVs and technology you know, and stuff like that. I have that. to admit, I was skeptical for a while about that. You know, where it's, you know it was a gimmick back in the, in the 50s, but, uh, but this time, for sure, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to take off because the technology is so much better. You can do it without the eye strain. And, and, uh, um, and I wasn't quite sure how well it would uh, help tell stories or you know what what the real value was. Maybe it's still a gimmick. Uh, but some of the things that I've seen since uh, sporting events are really cool in stereo. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, there there actually is a lot to be said for it. Um, you know that Jim was just uh, interviewed last week out at the, at the ranch. And Jim, who's Jim? Oh, Jim Cameron. Yeah, Jim. And not Jim. <laughs> <laughs> if you're friendly with Jim, he's Jim. Yeah. Um, and somebody asked him, "Well, are you, are you ever going to do a non-stereo movie?" And he said, "No, because stereo is just better. It's just better. It doesn't really matter um, what the subject is." And it's kind of like asking. Um, would you go back to doing a film without digital sound? Would you go back to an optical soundtrack? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's why it's just it's better to, to go with digital sound. Yeah. So he feels the same way about stereo that it's uh, used properly. It's it's just makes the the whole experience more compelling. Yeah. And I, if you look at the way that he used stereo in Avatar, he's doing it. Um, for immersion purposes, you know, when, when you're looking at the at the stereo image, it gives you a much stronger sense of presence. You really feel like you're there in a way that you you don't get from looking at it flat. Yeah. And I think that made it a, a really special picture. Yeah. What? For, back to Photoshop one one days. What what was the hardest thing to do on Photoshop? What what, what kept you up at nights and kept you uh, grinding your teeth or? What cost the most uh, pizza? <laughs> Late night pizza, you know. <laughs> or tell me a story if you, if, you know. Oh, I don't know. We we were to some extent in a race um, because we had this idea. We we launched into doing the uh, the application, and, and we were probably about a year into it, and to the point where we were pretty committed. You know, there was no backing out. When I started seeing stories in Mac Week that uh, that there were other you know that uh, Letrosets working on a color image processing program, or that um, what is it? The Avalon software has a product called PhotoMac that, and you know, in the press release, of course, it paints a rosy picture of all the great capabilities yeah. that it's got, and that that um, they were going to make it to market uh, almost a year before we were, and and that that sort of kept me up at night um, because I felt like. Uh, Oh, are we going to miss our, our opportunity? Um, and, and so we decided, well, if we can't be first, we, we absolutely have to be best. And so we redoubled our efforts to make sure that uh, all the algorithms that are in there, the, you know, the resize and the rotating, um, all those were as fast as they could possibly be and as high quality as they could be. So that if somebody compared our product with, with somebody else's, ours would always come out ahead. And I think one thing that that helped is that the, I use these tools, and as, even today, even on something even, like Avatar. Even today, yeah. I mean, now everybody uses it, but at the time, um, I had uh, started tinkering around with computer graphics, and I was starting to do a little work over in our computer graphics department. And so I started actually using this tool in production. And when you're a user, when you're really using it to, to try and make imagery, that uh, you. You develop a different focus about what's important in the application, and I was constantly pushing on workflow things and, and additional features, uh, improving the interface, and I, I think that shows in the, in the product. I think it was a better product because you know, one of the developers is an artist and uses it. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was walking through ILM once, mm -hmm. uh, back in your pre-Photoshop thing, you hand me a data sheet and you asked me if I knew any software developers. How important was it that you hooked up with Adobe? Did you try and 
yeah. see if Apple was interested or? Yeah, actually. Um, Probably I turned them down. <laughs> no, it, well, here's, what year was it when you approached Apple? Um, well, what Total happened was, was, um, bad, right? <laughs> was when I started at ILM, I was, um, I was uh, a contract employee. I was not actually on staff. So, you know, those of us who are job to job, hopefully, you know, it works out that one show ends and another one ramps up and, and you sort of transition from one show to the next. And that generally was true, but every once in a while a show would end and then there would be two months before the next one would start. And I'm sorry, but you're on your own. And, you know, I'd worked in the freelance world prior to that, so I was used to that situation. Uh, it's a little harder in San Francisco than it is in L.A., because in L.A. You know, there's so much production going on that it's very easy to, to, to jump around. Uh, but I got to know some of the, the uh, commercial production world um, up here, and I got uh, hooked up with, uh, with a director named Trip Groover, who did a lot of television commercials that had a high concentration of visual effects in them. And I had uh, some of my own motion control equipment, and uh, I, I got hooked up with this guy, and we, we did a bunch of commercials together. And he, he called me up at one point because he, he got some deal to, to produce some video for Apple for... I think it was Jean-Louis Gasset's, uh, like some big elaborate birthday party that was going on, and, uh, and so I got involved in that, and and so we had a bunch of meetings at Apple down there about it, and I got to know some people in Apple, and then when when we started working on Photoshop, I called up a couple of friends at, at Apple to for advice, and uh, let's see, Jim Batson was one of them, Dave Fung was another. Um, and I, I'm probably forgetting a, a few, but there were some really nice, very helpful <laughs> guys at, at Apple that, that um, uh, had good advice, and they said, uh, you know, I think you guys should talk to Supermac, because at the time, I think really? Supermac yeah. Yeah. Um, was developing pixel paint, and at the, at, when I first talked to Apple about it, um, we weren't quite sure what Photoshop was going to be. In fact, it wasn't even called Photoshop at that point. It was, uh, it was still called Display. And it could read and write a whole bunch of different image file formats. And so uh, the, the initial pitch to, to SuperMac was to bundle it as a file translation utility with, uh, <laughs> with Pixel Paint. And so we went and met with them, and I gave them a demo of, uh, of what it could do. And, and they, they seemed interested, um, and they did some back-of-the-envelope calculations. Well, we figure we're going to be shipping about this many uh, units of uh, pixel paint per month, and if we give you this royalty per copy, like, oh, man, that's, that's real money. That's actually that's worth doing. And since we had had this genuine interest and it looked like the, it was uh, financially worthwhile, you know, I called up Tom and uh, said, oh, we've we got to do this. And, and, Tom is your brother. Oh, my brother Thomas, yeah. Because uh, when this, this first started, it kind of started as a hobby thing, and I kept encouraging Tom to uh, add, add new features and put this in there. And he did it because uh, you know, he was a graduate student, um, or PhD candidate at the University of Michigan, and, and his thesis work was a little dry, and this was sort of a fun thing to do on weekends is to tinker with, with this. And uh, you know, one day I, I had this brilliant idea that, uh, you know, I think we should sell this. I think this has commercial potential, and Tom said. Well, first of all, you're crazy. Uh, and second, do you have any idea how much work writing a commercial application is? And fortunately, I had no idea how much work writing a commercial application is. I was just sort of full of naive optimism and, and said, oh, well, hey, if, if you write it, I'll figure out how to make money with this. And so that's sort of what prompted me to go talk to some friends at Apple. Take us back to, that was around 88, 89? Uh, yeah, it was fall of 87. 87? Yeah. There were no digital cameras back then. Right? Yeah. There, there were, wasn't digital. I guess there was some digital scanner scanners. The first, yeah, you know, the, the first digital scanner uh, I ever saw actually was uh, at Apple. Um, and somebody in the, uh, I think it was Jim Batson in the Advanced Technology Scanner, and I had a, uh, had a picture that I had taken of uh, my wife Jennifer when we were first dating. We went on a vacation to Bora Bora, and I took a beautiful picture of her on the beach. And I had that, uh, just a little 4 by 6 print of that, and I, I got a scan of it on that the scanner at Apple. And then, because scans were so hard to acquire at the time, yeah. uh, that, that image was 
like the main image I did demos with, doing things like <laughs> cloning her over or changing the color of the water or there's a little island in the background that I could move around or make larger. And so I did a lot of demo work with, with that image. And I gave it to some people at, uh, at Apple, I gave it to some people at Adobe, and pretty soon it was everywhere. But I saw some uh, uh, Next World magazine uh, article where it was uh, something about the new color Next. And there was a window on, the, <laughs> on the, the computer screen that was that picture of my wife. So that was kind of amazing. That image got everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, it, you you got to get back into that time because how did you, did you, when you were building Photoshop, did you realize that every camera within 20 years was going to turn digital? Oh, I, yeah, we had no idea it was going to be as, as huge as it was. We had a lot of confidence in it. I mean, I felt like uh, it was really cool. Um, it's... Yeah. It's going to be evident uh, immediately to anybody who sees it what the potential is and how cool it is. Uh, and so I, I was sort of convinced that, that yeah, we were going to take I, over the world. I remember going to the photo marketing show, photo marketing association show in I think 89 or 90 and working in, or just hanging out in the Kodak booth. Kodak didn't believe in this stuff. Most of the people, I had arguments on the show floor about whether digital photography was going to take over the industry, right? Yeah, you know, that, that's it's so tragic because Kodak had such a yeah. uh, an early lead on everybody else. They were kind of on the forefront of it for a while. And then for whatever reason, they decided that they didn't think it had a the future and, and they, they kind of pulled back their efforts and then everybody else shot right past them. Yeah. This guy talks about jumping to the next curve. Oh yeah. So a lot of companies don't see the next curve coming and fail to jump to it. You know, when I was uh, shopping Photoshop around, I, was, I met with a lot of different companies and it was, it was really interesting how different the reactions were that I got when I did the demos because um, uh, some companies uh, you know, immediately got it and they, they saw the potential and you know, Adobe was one of them. John Warnock, when he, he looked at it, it um, he had a handful of uh, very incisive comments to make about it and, and um, he clearly saw the potential and it seemed like a good fit. And then other companies, uh, not to, to single one out, but uh, I, I will anyway. I, I did a demo for Electronic Arts. Yep. And Electronic Arts, I, you know, they, they have had paint programs in their in their repertoire, so clearly they should understand the value of something like this. And I went and did my hour and a half demo, and at the at the end of it, he kind of looked at me with sort of a puzzled look and said, so "Why would anybody want to buy this? That that you know it seems kind of obscure. It's not as friendly and approachable as, as you know like a real paint program. Who's going to buy this?" And I was a little surprised at the reaction. They just didn't didn't get it. Yeah. Um, so we didn't go with them. Yeah. And history was written. Right? Yeah, what I, what room are we in, by the way? What, what, tell oh, me about yeah, this. Oh yeah, we're hallway. in the um, yeah we're in the main hallway of uh, of the lower floor of ILM. We're on this floor and the one above. And like, what, tell me about some of the stuff that's around here. Harvard. Yeah. Well, these are the these are the two doors to uh, to our two smaller theaters. So we do um, dailies in these two rooms here, where we have uh, really nice uh, digital cinema projectors, both of which are stereo capable. So uh, when we were doing Avatar, um, I had my dailies in, in this room with the crazy glasses. And Very cool. Every day. Well, thank you so much for giving Certainly. us a little look at the 20 years of Photoshop. Yeah, you bet. Thanks.